This compilation of three short movies about yellow shafted northern flickers opens with a two-part series about the species. These two shorts show you how flickers look and behave differently from other North American woodpeckers. And they explain something about all woodpeckers, how they're able to hitch themselves up trees, and how they prevent their constant hammering from turning their brains to mush. The third movie is a drama, the story of one flicker's battle with a starling over a nesting hole. Almost everywhere in the eastern United States that trees are found, these large kaleidoscopic birds abound. Their barred backs and speckled underparts on a tan background are punctuated by a black bib, a red triangle on the nape, yellow on the underside of the wings and tail, plus a white patch on the rump, visible when they fly away. He's known as Yellowhammer in Alabama, where he's the state bird. Note that his black tail is bifurcated, like the tails of barn swallows and eastern tiger swallowtail butterflies. And the males have black mustaches. Put it all together and you've got a yellow shafted northern flicker. His counterpart, the red shafted northern flicker, lives in the western half of the country. The two subspecies interbreed where their territories overlap. As woodpeckers go, the flicker is odd man out. There's his appearance, for starters. He's not, like most of them, mainly black and white. Nor does he spend most of the time that he's feeding pecking on tree trunks. Other woodpeckers tap around on the bark, then listen and watch for insect movement. Or they drill a spot open so that the sap will trap insects for them. And it's not like the flicker never does that, but more often he forages for bugs on the ground. He hammers the soil as if it were a tree trunk, looking for a foul-tasting food that most birds avoid, ants. His long tongue, both sticky and barbed, can lap up dozens, if not hundreds, in a swipe. And if he can uncover a nest, he slurps up the juiciest treat of all, ant or beetle larvae. Now, other woodpeckers will eat ants too, but the ant supply on trees is limited. By looking on the ground, flickers have been known to find and eat as many as 5,000 ants in one sitting. I'd like to know how anybody counted. Anyway, as he drills, he moves like a jerky bobblehead. He's distributing multiple shocks to his skull by attacking from dozens of slightly different angles. And like all woodpeckers, he cushions his brain by wrapping his tongue around his skull. I'm not kidding. I couldn't make that kind of stuff up. Woodpecker tongues are anchored at the base of the bill. The part of the tongue that stays inside the head forks and goes under the jaw, up the back of the skull, over the top, and down to the bill. When the tongue is extended, the section on top of his head recedes down the back of his skull. When he draws in his tongue, the whole apparatus behaves like a retractable measuring tape. A useful contrivance, that, wouldn't you say? Woodpeckers winter where it's cold. They'll manage to dig insect larvae out of tree bark in January, but they can't subsist just on insects. They also eat nuts, suet, berries, seeds. Did I leave anything out? Now the flicker avoids the harshest winters. Unlike other woodpeckers, he migrates 
at least those who live far north go further south. Even so, his diet is as varied as theirs is. And like them, he's equipped to stand on vertical trunks and hop up them, despite the fact that he gets most of his food on the ground instead of from pecking on bark. And despite the fact that he's more likely than the others to sit on a horizontal branch. All woodpeckers have adaptations that enable them to stand upright on vertical trunks. Whereas most birds have three front toes and one back toe, useful for gripping small horizontal limbs, woodpeckers have two front and two back toes with nails sharp enough to puncture bark to make standing erect possible. And they have stiff tail feathers, which they use as a brace. So, okay, flickers may not be tree huggers all that much when they're gathering food. In fact, author Pete Dunn notes that they often confound non-birders by foraging on suburban lawns and having the temerity not to be robins. Nevertheless, they certainly stand erect on tree trunks when they're advertising for mates. They start by calling a loud, prolonged stutter, like really prolonged. He can keep it up past the point when you'd think he needed a breath because, like many other birds, he has several extra air sacs that can be used to support the call. So he rants on and on. Woodpeckers aren't into fluffy courtship. All male woodpeckers woo with a staccato improv routine. Think hot car with the engine revving. But flickers boost that improv riff to new heights. Think rock star, heavy metal, literally. Every spring, woodpeckers are the percussion section of the orchestra. But only flickers include crash cymbals in their drum sets. Flickers are more than just large, showy birds. They're special because they leave the environment better off for their passing. Now, you might resent the way they hammer into your siding, but know that when they do, it's a possible sign of carpenter ants or termites. And even if it isn't, the harm they do there is outweighed by the nests they dig in trees because they don't reuse those nesting holes. And those are sites later used by bluebirds and tree swallows, sometimes even great horned owls. Of course, the flicker doesn't mean to be altruistic when he abandons a nest. Maybe he just likes the smell of fresh sawdust when he's starting a new family. For a couple of weeks in early April, this red-bellied woodpecker and his mate work several hours a day excavating a nest in a dead tree in our backyard. Must have been some nest. Must have had everything but hot and cold running water because a pair of starlings decided they wanted it. And within a week, the starlings had evicted the red-bellied pair, which I found kind of hard to believe having watched a red belly during an early spring snowstorm stand his ground against the starling that tried to take his food. But starlings are so combative that maybe the woodpeckers just decided they didn't want to take the heat. Lots of people hate starlings because they're so pushy and because they're not a native species. They never dig their own nests, they mooch. Honestly though, that part isn't their fault. Tree swallows and bluebirds use old woodpecker holes too. None of the three have the right kind of bills to be digging their own. 
But the stones don't necessarily wait for abandoned holes. They pester red bellies until the owners of newly dug nests leave in disgust. Anyway, those starlings that evicted the rightful owners faced their own home invader a week after they muscled in on the red bellies. A northern flicker, a larger woodpecker than his cousin, began trying to drive out the female starling who may have been incubating eggs. Flickers usually dig new holes, but not always. At first, the starling male sat in the flicker's personal space, hoping the intruder would take the hint and leave. When that didn't work, the starling barreled past him. He was no sooner in there than the flicker was back. The starling wasn't eager to join battle, but finally he had enough of that beak poking at him and took action. On guard! The starling clamped down on the beak of the flicker and hung on like a puppy with a rag in its mouth. Meanwhile, the flicker braced his legs and tail against the tree trunk and did his utmost to free himself. But the starling was motivated to hang on because he didn't want that powerful beak hammering on his head. The birds nearby sang on unconcerned while the two combatants struggled silently. Unless the flicker could wound the starling or drag him out by the beak, he stood little chance of evicting the occupants. All he's gotten for his trouble so far is a mouthful of feathers. And, you know, possession is nine-tenths of the law, especially in the natural world. The woodpecker managed to clamp down only briefly on his opponent's beak. So in the end, the flicker left seems like the woodpeckers are less determined to have those holes. They can excavate another. The starlings can't. At least I can say that red-bellied woodpeckers, despite the harassment from starlings, have been expanding their range. Mm -hmm.